Throughout my programming career, I have discovered that there are three levels of understanding I have to consider before I even think about coding. The more I build projects for our clients, the more I realize how understanding shapes both the code I write and the applications I build. In short, the quality of code and of the software is directly proportional to the number of programmers who understand whatever they are doing. Okay, you might be saying, what dumb statement is that? Of course we understand the code we are writing. I say, yes, you are right. But what I want to point out in this video is more like a higher level of understanding. Trust me, having this knowledge earlier would have spared me countless hours and a fair share of questionable code. The first level of understanding is understanding why something does not work. A normal routine for a developer when they encounter code is to determine the tainted code, change it, and check if the bug is fixed and that you did not cause regressions in other use cases. Now let us zero in on the second part, changing it. In this phase, there are two strategies at play. Either you understand the existing code on a deeper level, pinpointing the issue and making the precise corrections, or play the guessing game. Which one's the correct approach? It's the first one. When you modify the code, you should be capable of confidently foreseeing how your alteration will impact the entire application. If your fix doesn't produce the anticipated outcome, it should raise a sense of concern, prompting you to reevaluate your approach. In short, to create a reliable solution that won't compromise code quality, you must be sure that you possess a solid comprehension of both the code and the underlying issue. Now on to the second level of understanding, understanding why something works. Let's say you have bug A and bug B. You fixed A, that led to resolving bug B, but it may also have unintended consequences. If this happens, investigate the hidden dependencies which could lead to the discovery of further issues. So while use case B may appear fine now, once that other bug is fixed, it could break issue B again and possibly introduce more issues. All of these factors can introduce inconsistency into the code, and this inconsistency has a way of resurfacing at the most inconvenient times. It might require extra effort, but the investment in truly understanding why everything seems to work pays off in the long run, preventing future headaches and issues. The last thing to understand is why you're working on a development project. Imagine you are working on a feature that you are not particularly familiar with, and a team member suggests using a certain framework. What do you think is going to happen, right? You spend a lot of time trying to make this framework work for your task, but then you realize it might not be the right fit for what you're trying to do. This happened to me once because I didn't ask why we chose that framework in the first place. Many rush to avoid delays, but taking time to understand the project's purpose saves time later. Even when pressured to start without all the details, resist. Understand why the project exists before jumping in. In software development, there's always more to learn and probably more levels of understanding to be discovered.